in a stately brick home overlooking the Hudson River in New York. There may be more going on than just the average historic tour. Just looking at this building, one can see it is a testament to the wealth that this family had and the power they wielded over the city of Albany, and for the time that they lived. The house has been a museum and a national landmark for decades now, but the mansion was built in 1761 for Philip Schuyler, a general in the Continental Army and an early U.S. Senator, and he lived there from 1763 until his death in 1804. This Georgian-style estate originally consisted of 80 acres and included outbuildings, barns, and other structures behind the main house as well. The family moved in with three daughters, Angelica, Elizabeth, and Margaret. Margaret was also known as Peggy. And over the course of Catherine Schuyler's lifetime, she did give birth to 15 children, but only eight survived infancy. Due to the prominence and wealth the Schuylers had, their lives have been fairly well documented. With so much success from the Broadway musical Hamilton, a lot more attention has come to the Schuyler family, that of Elizabeth, or Eliza, the wife of Alexander Hamilton. She grew up in this home in the 1700s and was witness to Albany's history playing out before her very eyes as the country formed. The wedding of Alex and Eliza actually took place in this very parlor, located on the first floor of the house and reserved for only the finest occasions and impressing the most important guests. Like all women of her time, her daily life was far less recorded than her male counterparts, but what we do know is she spent her time growing up here, and several stories about her and her sister's various engagements with different gentlemen, including elopements, took place from within this home. But by all accounts, she was a fairly normal, God-fearing woman who read the Bible, lived by God, the church, and her very upper-class Dutch colonial upbringing. She lived as a widow after the death of Hamilton to Burr in a duel. And it is her spirit that has been reported to have been seen and heard in this home more than anything else. Oftentimes it's said that there are different triggers that can attribute to haunting activity and to the prominence of different things occurring, residual, intelligent, and the different things that are reported by people over the years. This home is entirely set up as it would have been when the Schuylers lived here, including a shelf of books owned by Philip Schuyler himself within his library. It would be impossible for us to say definitively that something paranormal occurs because a home looks a certain way or contains certain items, but there are tons of accounts of people witnessing paranormal activity when something is brought back in or altered in some way, like during restoration. The dining room at the back of the first floor has been preserved and decorated with a lush red damask wallpaper, and it's also one of the rooms where different whispers, chills, voices, and paranormal activity has been reported. Widely circulated for a long time was a story about a severed piece of the banister on the stairwell that was said to have been incurred by the tomahawk of a Native American who had come in to attack the family from the back of the house. That's never been historically verified, and it's a lot more likely, due to so much more research, that the attack was actually by British, and the mark on the banister may or may not have been made when someone was specifically targeting one of the daughters of Philip Schuyler as she saved her baby sister from this surprise attack on the home. The mark is still visible in the banister to this day. While a ghostly apparition may or may not be seen wandering in and out of Schuyler's office or up and down the grand staircase, it's in the large open area on the second floor, which was once called the saloon, and hosted balls, parties, and other activities, where even more paranormal activity has been reported. 
It's most commonly thought that the more human activity a particular space has experienced and more emotions and more different human lives, the more prominent paranormal activity is going to be, or at least some of the residual echoes of some of the things that have happened so often in the home, like people crossing from one door to another, which might from the outside give the impression that someone is walking in the home when there should be no one in there. It may just be a repeat of something that has happened over and over again, and it's not something necessarily terrifying, or something with some sort of evil or dark intention. It might not even have anything to do with the living at all. It has to do with the life that was lived there long ago. And something about the way our universe exists allows this kind of activity to simply replay over and over again. That coincides with a lot of the reports here and the ghost stories that have been passed along and some of the things that people have witnessed. While the 80 acres surrounding the Schuyler Mansion have been turned into city blocks, there are gardens outside that represent the outdoor kitchens where many of the enslaved people would have been working during the Schuyler's time at this property. Whatever the cause might be for the paranormal things that are witnessed in this home and have been for several years, the things that actually took place there and what we know and can verify are going to be the first, the prominent, and the most important parts of any historic landmark. But it doesn't mean that the ghost stories, legends, and subjective stories that people go through are any less a part of the history. This state-owned property has been extremely well maintained and preserved, and it's absolutely worthwhile if you have the chance to take a tour of this place, because while they will never host an overnight investigation, you can take as many photos as you'd like. <laughs>